everyone, it's Leon. I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about the absolutely most simple way to test network monitoring in New Relic. Now, before I dive in, you might be asking, why would I do that? Well, I think there's two populations of people specifically who might be interested. One are network engineers who are particularly interested in knowing whether New Relic is appropriate to monitor the network gear that they've got. It is, but it's my job to show you that today. And the other group of people are folks who are using or familiar with New Relic in an application monitoring space, but want to know if they can extend that out to also monitor their network uh, devices. So that's what I'm here to show you today. Let's get into it. Before we go and I show you anything on the screen, I want to point out that you need basically two things. You need to have a network device of some kind. Um, I don't care what it is, a router or a switch, whatever. I'm going to use a router. I don't care where you got it from. It could fall off the back of the box. It could be virtual. It could be whatever. I don't care. The other thing that you need is uh, to have a Linux or Mac OS system. It can be virtual or physical that we're going to install the new Relic uh, software on to monitor the network devices that you have. The third piece I want to make sure I'm clear on is that the Mac or Linux box has to be able to connect, ping, and do SNMP collection to the network device. I know it's obvious when I say it out loud, but I wanted to make sure that you uh, knew that uh, from the start. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, what I have here is a router. Um, I'm actually running it in GNS3. I'm going to talk a lot about GNS3 later, but for right now, it's a router. We don't care where it came from or how we got it or whatever. And it is running, and I can actually console into it. There's my console. I'll make the screen a little bit bigger. And look, I've even got an IP address. I have an IP address by DHCP. Um, but just to show you a couple of things, hit enter a couple of times because you always have to hit enter a couple of times. Um, show IP interface brief. Whoops. VR, there we go. And I have some interfaces, most of them are down, but again, that fast Ethernet interface is up and that's what we'll be monitoring today. And that IP address, I wanna make a note of that because I'm gonna to need to know that to start monitoring. The other thing is that the device has to be running SNMP. So if I take a look at the running config, show run, and we'll just look for the SNMP stuff we can see that I have a uh, SNMP read-only community string of NR1 GNS3. So there's two little pieces of data we need to know. So we've got that. The next thing, let me bring over, is that we have my Linux session. And just to prove that it's connected, I can ping 192.168.122.218. And I can see that I am pinging just fine. Yay! All right. Before I even go through the new Relic installation, one other thing has to be on this system, and that is uh, Docker. Don't panic. It's okay. I'm not going to teach you everything you need to know about Docker. Just a couple of commands. That's all you need. Um, there's a whole blog post, by the way, that goes over this step by step. The link to it will be in the show notes. Um, but really, you just have to install Docker. So I'm going to do that using uh, a utility called snap, sudo snap install docker. What's my password? I'm giving it my password. I'm not giving you my password. There we go. It's pulling stuff down. It's doing the configuration. Yay, we're installed. The other thing to do is to make sure that my account, my user login, is in the group that can do Docker commands because I'm installing the new Relic account with that. Uh, I'm installing a new Relic account with my login and it's going to need to be able to control Docker. So just to take that apart a little bit, whatever you use to install New Relic has to also be able to run Docker commands. In this case, I'm doing it all under my account. So first, I'm going to make sure there is a group called Docker, sudo uh, group add Docker. It's already there because the installation did it for me. Yay! Uh, sudo user mod add to group what group docker who i could put my username here i'm going to say dollar user that's whoever i'm logged in as that's been done finally new group or new group docker that makes sure that the group and the um, people who are in it take effect wonderful now that that's installed i can actually head over to let's bring this over one.newrelic.com and I want to do an install. And so we're going to go down here to the lower left corner and say, add more data. What kind of data? I'm going to do a search. Oop. There we go. Oh, there we go. Search for anything. 
network. Now, there's a lot of stuff that has to do with network. The deeper network, simulating traffic, Kentic Firehose, etc. In this case, I'm going to do SNMP. I could have just done a search for SNMP. But, you know, and you can also do NetFlow, Syslog. There's a lot of different network monitoring options that are there. Maybe worth a look. So, again, I'm picking SNMP. Continue. It's installing in Docker. Continue. What version of SNMP? If you don't know, it's 2C. That's what it is. If you know it's something else, Pick something else, but if you don't, it's 2C. Nothing ever is 1 anymore. What's the IP range, the CIDR range? Well, uh, 192.168.122.0 slash 24. That's the range I'm going to scan. I could put in additional ranges if I wanted to, but this is the one I'm going to put in. And what's that community string? NR1, GNS3. Oh, there we go. Validate and continue. Fabulous. Now I need to copy this and put it onto the other device. So copy, go back over to this screen and paste it, enter. What that does is it creates the file snmpbase.yaml. Now, at this point, if I run the next command, it's going to scan the entire subnet. I don't want to do that. I just want to put this one device in. I've got a lot of other stuff that's floating around here in my lab. I don't need to scan it or add it or have it, you know, messing up what I'm trying to test. So I'm going to do one little trick. This isn't something you're probably going to do a whole lot in production, but it is useful if you're testing out a specific device. I'm going to edit the SNMP YAML file. And right here where it says CIDRs, the discovery, I'm going to change that. So instead of looking for a slash 24 network, I'm just going to put in whoop, 218, just that one, that one machine. And save it and quit. I'm also going to make this screen bigger because the next couple of commands are going to take up more space. Now, go back to this screen, continue. There's the next command, which is going to pull down and do pull down the Docker container I need and do a scan. And there we go. Paste it in there. Hit enter. So it can't find that Kentic uh, K-Translate image, so it's pulling it down and setting it up and immediately jumping into a scan on that one machine. And you can see it's grabbing all these object IDs, all these SNMP OIDs. It found it and we're done. That's the scan. You could rerun that command over and over again to find more devices, to scan different subnets, etc. In this case, again, it's a lab, so we don't care. Going back to newrelic.com, I'm gonna continue. Now I did the scan, but it's not monitoring. In this case, we're gonna monitor and come back here and paste. And there we go. Now it's running. Like, okay, now what? Well, it is running. It's doing something. And if I go back to uh, newrelic.com, I can see that we're waiting to receive your SNMP data. But if you want to see what's happening on the system, there's a couple of commands you can run. Now, this isn't necessary. It's just some insight. The first thing is, what's my Docker stuff running? So if I go Docker PS, as in processes, this is the one Docker processor container it's running. I'm going to highlight that ID because now I can say Docker logs follow, which is like tail. Well, what do I want to follow? I want to follow that ID. Now I'm looking at the logging output of what it's scanning and how it's collecting things and so on. Back in New Relic, it is still collecting information. At this point, we're going to just pause a little bit because it's going to take a couple of minutes to collect data. First of all, I'm running a single router and it's not actually moving any data, so it's going to take a little bit longer. Second of all, you got to wait for stuff to come in. So once it comes in, we'll come back. I'm just going to clip it right now. And we're back. Okay, so after it finished, it immediately took me to see the devices that it has found. Fall was an old router that I was doing in a different demo. R1 is the one that we're looking at. And you can see that I'm starting to collect some information when I click in here to see the entity details. All right, there's, there's, not, a, there's not a lot because this thing isn't doing a whole lot, but I am collecting information on CPU, memory, the interfaces, and more depending on what kind of device it is. So you can see 
Very simple, just to run this down again. Make sure that you've got a network device to monitor, that it's running SNMP, that you've got a Linux or Mac OS box to run the New Relic software on to actually do the monitoring. And then you have three commands to set up. Just, you know, the first one to create that YAML file, the second one to pull down the container and do the discovery, the third one to actually start the monitoring in the first place. And at that point, you're off to the races. So I hope this helps you to make the decision to check out New Relic for network monitoring specifically and continue with your New Relic journey. Thank you so much for spending some time.